Ladies and gentlemen, now this morning we've got a brand new trailer from Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross, so I thought we'd give it a quick watch together. Now, we've got to give a little bit of credit where it's due, man. That was definitely a really, really good trailer and so much better in comparison to the cringe fiesta that we had last week. So, yeah, I think they did a really, really good job with this one, man. They've definitely hyped up uh, kind of the upcoming story as well and also the release of the one Escanor. It kind of got me thinking because all of the shots that they've shown in this trailer are from kind of the next two bits of story that were released in the Japanese version. Are we meant to have have the um uh, the next story chapter drop uh, with the release of Assault Meliodas and that goes like just before the one Escanor fight and then you've got like the Malaskula fight and the one fight um, in the latest story on JP as well. So we actually might see a double story drop next week on Global uh, which is going to be really really good for gems because I think that gives you like 30 additional gems if you do uh, both of those I think at least to the best of my memory but again there's going to be a lot of um uh, additional rewards one thing that does uh, kind of irk me a little bit and again maybe this is just a little bit of a pet peeve but they've done this on like every single festival banner it's like the one festival up to 110 free draws and they did this with like the Liz festival and Lost Vane festival as well and the draws like aren't actually on uh, the one festival banner or the festival banner it's like a completely separate banner and I must admit like this banner you know is is like the crazy banner it's the home coming banner it's such a good banner for um newer players but in the past you know the banners have been like the matrona banner the blue hellbrum banner uh the arthur banner as well like very unexciting banners for the most part so it's kind of like in a way a bit of a gray area on the false advertising because it's like the one festival up to 110 free draws but it's not actually on the one banner so if you saw this and got really excited like oh dude i'm gonna get 300 gems worth of draws on the escanor banner uh you're not gonna get that it's uh just on the current level 80 banner but again, like, in terms of the actual banner itself, I mean, this banner is absolute fire for progressing players, man. Uh, so, yeah, there's not too many complaints there. But, you know, I just find uh, the whole, uh, you know, the one festival up to 110 free draws. I don't know. It, it just it sometimes comes across like a, a little bit cheap. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. But at the same time, you know, it's like a big pull in for new players as well. And I think any new player downloading this game and getting like a free level 80 demon melee day one is going to be pretty damn happy so i don't think there are going to be too many unsatisfied customers there however when it does come to the one escanor i also wanted to throw out kind of a couple of tips and uh, need to know information to prepare for this man uh so one thing that you might want to get ahead of the game on is um uh, preparing a little bit of food for the one Escanor. So raisin with sugar um, is one of the foods used, probably the easiest one to access there. So this is affinity food for Sario, Escanor, and Merlin. And I think for Escanor, this gives him like... Uh, what is it? Is it an additional weapon cosmetic? So yeah, you get this additional weapon, man, which is really, really good. Again, you want as much power as you can on the one Escanor. So you want to make sure you cook up ideally 200 of these. Uh, or what is it? 200 of the lifesteal caviar food as well. Let me see if I can find the recipe for that one, man. I think that's... um. Uh, what is it? Fairly easy to find as well. Uh, but that one's in Chapter 6, whereas the Raisin one is in Chapter 3 there. Uh, yes, it is the, the Caviar Milk Canapé here. So this is an alternate one you can cook up for Escanor. Again, either of these can be used to kind of fuel up his affinities at 200, but you will need a total of 200 food. And again, that can save you on some of the, uh, what is it, alcoholic beverages to give affinity, uh, or some 1k affinity uh, tokens. Now, next up, we're 
we're gonna have a quick look at the one Escanor banner, and I want to give some advice to everybody that Escanor's drop rate as a festival unit is still 0.25%, and you need to go 900 gems on this banner to guarantee that you get him, so have that expectation summoning on this banner that you're not gonna get Escanor aside from the final 900 gems. There is actually a pretty good chance that you are gonna get one copy in all of your summons, because it's like, on average, you're gonna see him one in 36 multis there, but it's still like on average, you know, one Escanor in a thousand one hundred gems worth of summons. So the um the drop rate on him is very, very low, but also on this banner, having every single festival unit, you've also got Lost Vein Meliodas, you've got Goddess Elizabeth and King, you know, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be seeing many festival units in your summons. But again, man, you know, RNG can swing in many, many different ways. There are going to be some people doing one rotation, getting like five, six, six, six Escanor, and lots of people doing a full rotation and only getting the guaranteed version of Escanor at nine. 900 gems, so just keep that in mind as well. But again, your Escanor, Lost Vein, Meliodas, Goddess Elizabeth, Festival King as well. Also, the green version of Arthur, and there should be a um. A bonus event, uh, along with the Escanor and One Year Anniversary Festival next week, that gives this man away for free. So that should be a really good time. Also, on the Japanese version, Demon Hendrickson, we had uh, the Red Demon Melly. There's also like a good mix of coin shop characters that are actually super valuable to get the dupes on, like Merlin, Escanor, Esterosa, Zeldris, uh, Blue Droll. They also had Red Roxy, Mono, Camilla. Again, on this banner, those are really not the characters that you want to be seeing, uh, but also Green Shin as well, and Green Shin is such a good character, man, so I'm really hopeful that he's going to be in this banner, and also I can get him on my free-to-play account, man, but I'm curious to see if they're going to change or improve anything on this banner for global, because uh, again, there's characters like the Blue Valentine's Derriere uh, that they might kind of chuck in this banner as well, but I'm very interested to see kind of what direction they do go down uh, with global's commitment to kind of merging and also buffing banners but to be honest, man, even if this banner is exactly the same, it's like such a ridiculously good banner that I think a lot of people are going to be very, very happy, generally speaking, with their summons. Uh, so yeah, that's a look at the Escanor banner, but just, you know, uh, for your own health and sake, go with the expectation that you're only going to get one copy of Escanor at the guaranteed 900. Also, just to quickly recap his cards, so you've got an Influx Damage card, which basically deals additional damage based on his remaining health up to 80%. So yeah, this one is crazy, man. It hits so incredibly hard. But also nuking into Escanor and getting his health down uh, can also mitigate this damage as well. However, his second card just deals crazy damage, man. 600% of attack at rank 3. Again, in comparison, like this one deals more damage in the right scenario. But this one also is much better for breaking through Goddess Liz's shields. And if you use this one first and you've got like uh, loads of his passive stacks as well and get him topped up, then yeah, this one one just hits super hard on the follow-up he's just a broken crazy character and also um uh, via his passive unique as well every single turn he gains a buff which increases all stats by six percent so this also includes sub stats as well crit chance crit damage pierce ray uh life steal resistance and at three stacks of this he becomes fully debuff immune for one turn and then it kind of like cycles down by one and then kind of builds back up again um so yeah it's a bit of an ebb and flow passive but on turn three man he's definitely the most dangerous there and that's kind Kind of the point in the um uh, the match where like Escanor usually wins and just demolishes everybody. Also his ultimate I would say is so greatly enhanced by additional levels but the thing is with Escanor in comparison to Lost Vein Meliodas like he doesn't really need his ultimate to win PvP matches so it's just like really nice for PvE in a lot of the time because most scenarios in PvP man again the cards are so overpowered that you just don't see his ultimate on a lot of damage setups and teams but yeah it deals like uh, direct damage and then also death damage as well which is additional kind of like echo damage based on the amount of damage it dealt the first time but this scales up really really aggressively especially around um 
uh, what is it, five, six, and six, six on the character. So you can see, like, uh, you know, one six, for example, it's like 720% damage, uh, but then also 20% additional damage. But then at six, six, it's like 1,080% damage, but then echoes 100% of that damage as well. So yeah, it scales up ridiculously well. But unless you're like a massive Megalodon whale, you know, it doesn't matter too much. And it's not as important in comparison to like Lost Vein's ult, which is kind of like his main win condition for a lot of pvp matches so yeah Escanor for free to play man even without uh you know six six or one six he's still gonna be smashing pvp now, also one thing as well, kind of the best gear set for Escanor, because you just want that massive crazy damage, is four attack and two crit damage. Again, it doesn't really matter the ordering of the pieces, if that makes sense. You just want to make sure that you've got four attack and two crit damage. So here on JP at the top, I got crit damage, just because I got a really good roll on the ring and bracer. Um, but yeah, you want attack rolls on everything, kind of health rolls, defense rolls, like everything's pretty standard for the most part when it comes to Escanor. But again, the main criteria of this man is just smashing absolutely everybody and if you are like a massive blubbery well there are some people that do like to run kind of what is it four health and two crit damage but in order to make that work um uh, you know, very well, very consistently uh, in high tier PvP. You kind of need like that 6 6 Escanor because you want to draw out the matches a little bit longer. And I would advise, again, for most people, uh, like attack crit damage really is the way to go for Escanor, man. It's just like such an improvement. Uh, but also, one thing as well, the character's best association, at least in my opinion, is Merlin because Merlin has the same link that she does on the green and red versions of Escanor, which gives him like almost 20% additional crit chance and this guy is all about critting man again if you can get those massive crits you're going to see so much additional damage off this dude and with the passive the red merlin association um and also halloween go through as well and maybe death pierce on the back in certain scenarios again the damage is just so crazy man just absolutely ridiculous so yeah i just wanted to throw out a um uh, a few tips for Escanor today, kind of go over the character, gear, stuff to get prepared, and also uh, expectations for the banner as well. Uh, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed this little preview breakdown, and if you did, please do smash that like button, that'd be greatly appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching, take care, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day.